We've raided bandits for too long, Tamerlane thought. It's time for a bigger target, for a bigger prize. The local village of Tevia was flush with food and weapons, having recently stocked up for Empress Regea's army. The river poses a formidable obstacle. With only a single bridge to cross, it would be suicide for horse archers to assault. Even if he managed to cross, the enemy would hold the high ground and several layers of stone walls. Instead, he would rely on his cunning and his ancestors' famous tactics to win the day. We must draw them out and ambush them where they are weakest. Prepare the archers and the woodline to the east. Don't let the women escape. We must draw them across the river. Here they come. Fall back. With the garrison in tow, Tamerlane and his horse archers retreated east to the tree line where the main body of his army lay in wait. Archers, fire! The enemy shield wall proved no match for the skilled Timurid archers and they fell in the fields, their blood providing one final sacrifice, nurturing the lands they so valiantly defended. In the last episode, we left off right before initiating our first village raid. Morenia of the Empire will serve as a perfect target. Our main objective here, besides crushing the defenders, is to avoid losing our best troops, the horse archers. We've spent time building up our frontline slave meat shield, the throwaway peasants who will be converted into medicine XP shortly. None of our frontline units have shields, so spreading them out will help avoid some casualties from incoming missiles. Our horse archers are placed to the rear, forcing the enemy to engage the frontline first and avoiding any damage to them. This is the perfect time to strike out and distract the enemy, drawing the attention of their archers and impaling one from time to time. The enemy infantry are approaching our lines, so it's time to give the charge command with our infantry. We send the javelin cavalry forward now that everyone is engaged and they can roam without much risk of being taken down. It's time to bounce more heads off the floor. Gotta love that ragdoll. Everything goes according to plan here and we lose only peasant troops. And because militia can't be recruited, they can be taken as prisoner and used as more slaves to sacrifice in battle. We'll need more militia if we want to have a proper shield wall though, so we continue our conquest by attacking Nidian. They prove no match for the Timurid might and we don't lose a single troop. Because we're taking on more prisoners and foot troops, we should keep looking for opportunities to clear out mountain, steppe, and desert bandits to find mounted troops. Until we can build up our stock of rideable mounts for the foot troops, our party will be vulnerable to attacks. Mountain hideouts rarely spawn highwaymen until the final boss fight, so be sure to duel at the end to avoid killing those troops. Only two highwaymen this time, but it's better than nothing. Be wary of easy targets. This pack of loot pinatas looked like easy prey, but they turned out to be bait, the trap being set by Nifun of the Southern Empire. Fortunately, we have 0.4 movement speed advantage and will escape with ease, but had we attacked the looters, we would have been sitting ducks with a disorganized speed penalty. These looters are much safer. Time to eat. Yeah, boy. Speaking of loot pinatas, the Ember of the Flames Miter Clan are about as easy a target as they come. They wield no shields, no ranged weapons, and no mounted troops, and possess no threat to our party. This early in the campaign, it rarely makes sense to execute nobles. Better to hold onto them and wait for a ransom offer to earn precious dinars. Also note, if you execute a Miter Clan member, they will be replaced within days. In order to remove a Miter Clan from Calradia, we must capture all four at the same time and execute them together. Looks like we're collecting minor clan nobles like Pokemon. 
Our bank balance has steadily been on the decline for the past two weeks, and we can't sustain this many troops in the long haul through killing bandits and picking off peasants. It's time to move into the big leagues now. A famous bank robber by the name of Willie Sutton was once asked, why do you rob banks? He replied, because that's where the money is. It's time to rob the mobile banks of Calradia, aka caravans. Because of our mounted forces, our movement speed is quite high, but it's not enough to catch caravans head on. We will lay in wait in the woods across from the bridge from Atfinia. The plan is to force the enemy into the alcove to the south, making it impossible to escape battle. And with a little luck, a medium-sized caravan comes from the east across the bridge. They try to move away at the last second, but it's too late. Their only option is to head further south and to their inevitable demise. We put their minds at ease, asking for a reasonable price from our stolen loot. After agreeing to 10,800 dinars and goods were exchanged, we sprung the trap and asked for the Halsey Lion special. Your money or your life. That line never gets old, you sexy man. The stakes are much higher this time. We must preserve our mounted troops as best we can, but still come away with the victory. Most of our meat shield is made up of peasants, but we shrink the line tight enough to put the shield militia up front and soak incoming arrows. With the enemy content to trade arrows, we can safely toss a few javelins their way. The primary target here are the enemy cavalry since we don't have a good counter for them. Oh my god, what are they doing? After the third ragdoll, the enemy moves out from their position to charge forward. Our slave wall soaks up the cavalry charge, but they lose only a single unit from it. Now the enemy has free reign to roam behind our main lines, and can lead to losses for our mounted troops. Our best chance is to continue ragdolling as many enemy cavalry as we have javelins for. For once, the AI makes a big brain move and engages our horse archers in melee combat. I think giving the charge command might have been warranted here, but in the end it didn't matter as we didn't lose a single mounted troop. With only 12 peasants dead, this raid was a complete success. And as luck would have it, a single caravan guard survived, allowing us to take the rest of their loot, another 2400 dinars, and all the items we sold them. A raid like this will sustain our party wages for nearly half a year. Fortunately, we still have the base of our army, plenty of horse archers and javelin cavalry. While they are mostly useless, I do like to recruit the bandit bosses because of how rare they are. The majority of our our front line is expendable peasants and spear militia. We will continue to recruit peasants as the base since they give the same steward XP but only cost 1 dinar each. It's also a good idea to keep 10 to 20 shield militia since they only cost 3 dinars each but can withstand a tremendous amount of arrows and save the peasants from an early demise. Unfortunately we picked up a tail, two empire parties intent on ending our ambitions for good. And because their movement speed is close enough to our own, they'll continue the chase for days at a time. Three days later. Situation like this could spell disaster for us in the future as not being able to fight for fear of the disorganized speed penalty debuff could keep us from earning an income for weeks at a time. Instead of trying to outrun them, it's better to give them what they want. Blood. We run right past this looter group and force them back into the chasing parties. They take the bait and we are now in the clear. With all the demands of living the bandit lifestyle, it can be easy to lose track of food stocks. We take great care not to run low on any of our foods, taking them by force from villagers and villages when necessary. Here we have a special case of Tail World's lovely programming. We don't stand a chance against a party of this size given that ours is made up of 50% peasants. So we run, but Tail World's has other ideas. From time to time, clicks on the campaign map will register and unpause the game. I'm not sure what's causing this bug, but it pissed me off pretty good when it happened. Not wanting to start from scratch again by fighting or safe scumming, I decided to leave the troops behind to escape. Fortunately, it took troops from the top of our roster first, meaning we only sacrificed peasants that we were planning on sacrificing anyways. The biggest pain is losing horses from our inventory though, which will set us back days or weeks worth of progress. With the party now out of danger, Timur decided to take his frustration out on this huge pack of peasants. 16 prisoners, which will more than make up for the early earlier losses, and they gave up 1800 dinars for the second fight. We've built up the army to 110 strong, it's time to make more money. The land bridge between Kuyas and Orticia is the most famous choke point in all of Calradia. From here we can stop the flow of trade and easily corner whatever party we want. For now we will satisfy ourselves with 10,000 dinars and murdering everyone in this caravan. We position our meat shield in front again, keeping the formation deep in order to slow down as many cavalry as we can. A wider formation will be easier for them to punch through, so four ranks deep or more is preferable. Once stuck, they become easy prey for our javelins and ranged troops.
Wow, these crossbows are nasty. Even with the shield wall, our peasants are getting destroyed at range. We make sure to let at least one troop survive for a second battle and even more loot. A great ancillary benefit to wiping out caravans is they will often have mercenary troops, which we can use. At level 200 Stuart, these troops will have an extra 25% wage reduction, which is huge. Here's one of my favorite tricks for farming scouting XP by spotting tracks. We can cause a huge traffic jam on both sides of the land bridge and push caravans back on both sides, picking up tracks each time we cross. At this point, you're probably noticing the pattern. Build up our party, spend a ton of money on troop wages, fight caravans to afford the troops, lose half of our party, recruit more meat shields, and repeat. It's a vicious cycle, but fortunately we're gaining a tremendous amount of XP on our core skills along the way. We pick up 12 peasants here, a couple shield militia there, and we'll be back at full strength again in no time. Okay, it's game on now. 200 contractors is one of my favorite perks for a playthrough like this. Let's go hunt caravans and pick up more mercenary troops. But first, more loot pinatas. Only 11 hidden hand troops? How sad. They paid well this time, 2,000 in our ransom. We are so close to clan tier three now and a bigger party. We may even be able to handle a noble battle soon. Here's a quick tip. If you hate using kicks to get past a shield, try delaying the release of your own attack by a fraction of a second longer each try until you get past the guard. The delay will eventually match the AI starting their own swing and it's an easy kill from there. The nice thing about using this choke point is we can stack several caravans up, allowing us to pick and choose which target we want. Smaller caravans can be nice because they have the same money on hand but offer much less resistance. Okay, I know I've called these guys loot pinatas before, but now they really are after looting this caravan. And they had plenty of prisoners we can hire directly directly into our army, my favorite. After only a few caravan fights, we're up to nearly 75,000 dinars. Soon we'll be able to afford much more than a raiding force. Perhaps an occupying force? Two more caravans and we have surpassed 100,000 dinars. Time to pick up some force bandits now that we have more savings. No shield troops needed, we can use our own and have archers to support us from the back. We don't really have a good one versus one weapon since our polearm is way too long, but a javelin in melee mode can do the trick just fine. We also pick up some step bandits since we're now clan tier 3 and have a higher party limit. We have tons of money saved up and can afford to take on many more horse archers now. We only need to take out two or three hideouts to fill up 